Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing another math video. On uh, this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, creating a table of values specifically for a linear function. So this is one of those skills that's really important to be able to do. And if you can do it, basically that means you can graph any linear function that you have. All right, so let's for, say, for example, I have a linear function. Uh, y is equal to 1 half x plus 3. So if I have something like this, I might be asked to graph it, or maybe I'm just asked to make a table of values. So generally what I like to do is I like to do this. So a lot of times my students just get really confused about, you know, where do I get the values from? Where do I choose them from? So what I started to do is I used to say, instead of just writing x, y, I used to say, so I let x equal in this column, and then y equals in this column. So so this helps my students um, a lot of times get over the fact that they can choose whatever values for x that they want to. And those values from of x determine what y is. So if I let x equals, and I usually say negative 2, 0, and 2 is my go-to values. Um, but again, you can choose other ones depending on what you have. If there was a different fraction here, you might choose other ones. If this was 3, I would probably choose negative 3, 0, and 3 just to make the fraction work out better. So then I have to figure out what y is. So I can do that. I can, you know, sort of just, all the all I do is take these values for x and put them in here. So my first value for y is going to be y is equal to negative 1 over 2, or sorry, positive 1 over 2 times negative 2 plus 3. So you might not write this in here, and actually I'm going to, I'm going to move that out. So I don't like where it's there, it's a little bit crowded. And so I just do the math on this. 1 half times negative 2 is negative 1 plus 3. And that ends up e equaling 2. And then my next point is actually the y-intercept, which I know, because this is slope equals mx plus b, so that right there is the y-intercept, so I'll just put 3 there. And then 2 I'll just do mentally. So 1 over 2 times 2 is 1, plus 3 is 4. And you can kind of see the pattern here, guys. It's going up by 1. All right, so that, that's my table of values. That gives me more than enough. I only need two points to be able to graph. So let's try that with something a little bit different. So let me just erase this, this working over here just to give myself a little bit more space. Um, what if we had something like this? Um, 2x plus y is equal to 6. So this right now is not in y equals mx plus b form. But that doesn't mean we still can't make a table. And I, and obviously, guys, if you could rearrange it, which we can, you could do that if you wanted to. But I'm just going to assume right now that we're not going to do it. So it might be something that's not really worth rearranging. So I'm going to choose some values for x here. And again, I'll, just, I'll choose different ones this time. So I'll choose negative 3. Uh, and I won't choose a pattern, I'll just choose a random number. So we're not going to see any, like this one goes up by 1 over here. We're not going to see that over here because the spacing between these numbers is not the same. So I'll just plug in some different numbers in here. So this one requires a little bit more work. So all I do, uh, 2 times negative 3 plus y is equal to 6. And then that's negative 6 plus y is equal to 6, so then I add 6 to both sides, add 6, add 6, and I get y is equal to 12. So there's my first point. And then I do the same thing again, so 2 times 1 plus y is equal to 6. So that's going to be 2, so I subtract 2 from both sides, subtract 2, subtract 2, so I get y is equal to 4. And then I do it again with 5, 2 times 5 plus y is equal to 6, so that's 10 plus y is equal to 6, subtract 10, subtract 10, and that's going to be negative 4. And there it is, so I created my table of values, even though my equation is not y equals mx plus b. Now, of course, if you want it to, you could have done this right away, y is equal to negative 2x plus 6, so we'll just take 2x across the other side and make it negative, and that will be easier to make your table of values from, but if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. 
So there it is, guys. That's how I create a table of values for a linear function. I hope this video helps you somehow, but this is a great skill to be able to, to uh, do for graphing, and you will always be able to graph a line if you can do this. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in class. Like, share, subscribe, comment, give me a like, whatever you want to do. All right.